Good evening, this is Thames from London. Just a reminder that coming up in a half hour is another trip to Cory. But with the time at 8 o'clock, it's time for that great American duo, Nick and Greg. It is cold. It is the weekend. Outside a haunted mansion. There are no ghosts and goblins here, are they? <laughs> He's a ghost. A ghost. Are you? <laughs> oh, he's just my turn to the camera, it's silly. He's just my Greg. Three goals and two assists. This and is crazy. Look at all this. Traffic everywhere. Good moment for I mean Alvarez. As Atlanta gets it rolling off the They're doing road work. Just a second, let me move this. They're doing road work out on the major interstate through the city. And there's traffic everywhere. All the side streets are jammed. It's like we're in L.A. again. I mean, Greg, a, a comment, please. You know, it's a mess. It's a total mess. And all because they have to do bridge work. How in the world is anyone ever getting anywhere in all this garbage? I mean, garbage is an understatement. <sighs> Good evening. We are in Market Square, yet another Saturday. I don't know what it is about coming down here, but it's just, there's something satisfying about coming down here and just people watching, you know? Or watching you, Greg. Notice how he just coyly remains quiet, as he always does. If I had a dime for every word you said in 13 years... You wouldn't be very rich. <laughs> it's lines like that. That's why I fell in love with you. You know that? Fifteen minutes later. Uh, by the way, we need to mention something to our audience out there about next weekend for us. <laughs> by the way, I think we should tell the audience what we are planning to do next weekend. In Atlanta. Yes, for the first time this year. And uh, we're going to hopefully watch Atlanta United win. After what happened earlier today, I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, they got massacred. Look it up. We're planning on being down there Saturday and Sunday. We have a room for the night. Of course, we'll vlog it, take you along, all that. So we're walking around trying to burn lunch calories off, mainly. I ate way too much Chinese food, what a surprise. Just walking around, just holding hands, having a good time, enjoying this crisp late winter air. At least the temperature's normal and it's not raining. For once on the weekend. I mean, as you saw a couple of videos ago, we were doused, and last weekend it rained. We stayed mostly dry. Uh, but hopefully it'll be dry next weekend for our weekend out of town. Stay tuned. Okay, so this is Saturday evening, March 3rd, and the Oscars are tomorrow night. We've made our predictions in the last vlog. We don't need to talk about those again. But, uh, 
What do you think the year in film was like overall in 2017? Uh, not bad. There are a lot of good films. Film is that powerful medium in which you can tell a great story, you know. I still believe in that. I still believe it's true. Oh, aren't the Razzies tonight? Yes, the Razzies are tonight. <laughs> I'm always interested to see what they're going to pick as a worst, worst picture. And also worst remake, ripoff, or sequel. Because there are, as you well know, there are a ton of those. <laughs> And most of them are pretty bad, usually Transformers movies. <laughs> I wish we could have a unison reaction on that. <laughs> if, you, know, you know how Siskel and Ebert always did two thumbs up? We could have the devil <laughs> avoid that film at all costs. <laughs> Two very boring minutes later. Okay, so we're a couple minutes later, and Greg has just told me that the Razzies have actually already happened. So uh, here is my reaction as he tells me what won. Or in this case, lost, I guess. Yeah, you could say it that way. Uh, worst picture, the emoji movie. Oh! <laughs> worst, I, know. Huh? I, I never thought that was a good movie anyway. Worst Actress, Tyler Perry for Boo 2 and Medea Halloween. Mm -hmm. No comment. Worst Actor, Tom Cruise for The Mummy. Mm. Why did that need to be remade again? Worst Supporting Actor, Mel Gibson for Daddy's Home 2. Worst Supporting Actress, Kim Basinger for Fifty Shades of Darker. Oh, pfft. Worst screen combo, any two obnoxious emojis in the emoji movie. <laughs> Worst remake, ripoff, or sequel, Fifty Shades Darker. Oh, yeah. Worst director, Anthony Tony Leondis for the emoji movie. Special Rotten Tomatoes Award, the Razzie nominee, So Bad You Loved It, went to Baywatch. Worst screenplay went to the Emoji movie. That was the low point of the film year for 2017, was that movie. I mean, I could even tell it when I first heard the title. I was like, no, pass, no ma'am, keep going. Oh, yeah. Those, oh. Are, those are the Razzies for this year. Uh, I need my palate cleansed by the good films at the Oscars tomorrow night. Please. Uh, is there any hope for the cinema? Okay, so it's 8 o'clock on Saturday night and we're home. Are we a boring old married couple? I guess so. What's that you say, Sonny? That's my second attempt at an accent and I fail in this video. But, honestly, before you know it, it's going to be post Oscars all right mm -hmm. here we go three two one now what a show it was one of the best uh, one of the best shows in a long time you know certainly made up for that gaff last year but the shape of water was named best picture we we picked three billboards I mean do you think The Shape of Water has uh, joined great pedigree with uh, films like Moonlight, Spotlight, a lot of light themes, Birdman, 12 Years a Slave, Argo, those are the last few winners, and here's the first one, Wings. Do you think, do you think this film uh, stands with those? Well, it wasn't my pick. So I was a little surprised, but I was not. But I was not surprised at the same time. It, it was a good film. Yes, it was a great film. All nine of them were great, as we said before. You know, so any one of them we could have been happy with at winning. So, uh, great job to Guillermo del Toro. He also won Best Director as well. You know, and it was a real tough competitive categories this year. Uh, no surprise, Gary Oldman won. Oh, anybody could have. 
foretold that. Yeah. Francis McDormand, what a speech. Wow. Inclusion writer. And if you don't know what that is, it is a clause that actors have put into their contracts that says that the hiring done on a film and the roles behind the camera as well are uh, gender equal and in inclusive and there's like no nothing funny going on, you know? And I'm all for that. Diversity, inclusion, acceptance. As I said before, those are things that are very near to my heart, to our hearts as well, yeah. you know? Looking over, and we have the list pulled up in front of us here, looking over some of the other awards, uh, it's natural a Disney film wins best original song. Wow. And uh, I also tweeted, Rainbow Connection got shafted in 79. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see here, some of the other ones. We definitely have got to see A Fantastic Woman, which won Best Foreign Language Film. Yeah. Because it's about a transgender woman and her story. It's very important that we all get out and see that movie. It's very important that we do. It's the trailers for that look very good. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did see them. Uh, also, Call Me By Your Name won Best Adapted Screenplay. That was very well deserved. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I'm still surprised that the disaster artist got nominated in that category, yeah. you know. But it was it was a good adaptation, you know. Yeah. And uh, I didn't I didn't see any pictures of Tommy Wiseau. It, I'm sure he was there, right? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, Jordan Peele won Best Original Screenplay for Get Out, and that was a moment I will never forget. The whole room was just cheering, you yeah. know. It's great to great to see him win that. You know, yes. mm -hmm. it was a great movie too. Yeah, I, I'm glad we saw that last March, not long after the last Academy Awards ceremony. We uh, had no idea it was going to be nominated for anything at that point. No, it it was a word of mouth film that uh, everyone was liking it, and I got the idea when we were down in Atlanta for a weekend. Hey, we ought to go see this movie, and I'm glad we did. Uh, Dunkirk won for Best Sound Editing, Best Sound Mixing, and Best Film Editing. No surprise there. It was It was a beautiful movie. It was a beautiful movie, yes. And uh, I know, Andy, you loved that film over Darkest Hour. You told me as such. And uh, I, I can see that argument. I really can. So it deserved to win those three Oscars. Phantom Thread Costume Design. I mean, it's natural to film about a dressmaker, which was a really good film. Like, won won like, that. Like we said in the other video, that one surprised me. Yeah. I, I wasn't expecting it to be that good. Yes. And those were beautiful dresses in that film. I mean, hands down. And uh, Roger Deakins, on his 14th nomination, the great cinematographer, one of the greatest cinematographers, won for Blade Runner 2049. It's just... It's just great. He has shot great films. I'm going to pull up his filmography real 14 quick here. Nominations. 14 nominations. He was nominated for The Shawshank Redemption, Fargo, Kundun, O oh Brother Where Art Thou, The Man Who Wasn't There, The Assassination of Jesse James, No Country for Old Men, The Reader, The Remake of True Grit, Skyfall, Prisoners, Unbroken, Sicario. A lot of those are great movies I have seen. You know, but he finally wins for Blade Runner, you know. Yeah. I mean, next to Vilmos Zygmunt and other great cinematographers in motion picture history, Zygmunt's shot Close Encounters of the Third Kind, by the way, one of my favorite movies of all time. I mean, what can you say? It's great to see someone who's put in a lifetime of hard work finally get an award. Jodie Foster, that one moment... Streep. Are you blaming Meryl Streep for yeah. being on crutches? What happened to you, Streep? <laughs> <laughs> that was what... And by the way, did you notice, I'm just seeing this on Twitter right here, did you notice when Guillermo del Toro went up to the stage... He and checked the He envelope. checked the envelope. <laughs> yeah, I did notice that. Yeah, so it's nice that everyone got it got it right. and uh, and Fade didn't screw up this time. And by the way, Phantom Thread costume designer Mark Bridges won the jet ski <laughs> and the trip. <laughs> Which was which were real prizes for the shortest Apparently. speech, thirty six seconds. <laughs> a new car. Who knew Helen Mirren could be a model? <laughs> Helen Mirren, 
should be the well they're not they're not Barker's beauties anymore you know since Drew Carey took over but who knows anyway we're running long here so we're gonna wrap it up and where's where's the long speech music I'm not going to track it in here. That's not happening. This is our vlog. We shut up when we want to shut up. Okay? No shut up music. Da 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, if, if you like this video... Yeah, hit, the, hit the like button, leave us a comment, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Yes, if you haven't already. And please hit that notification bell. Yes, new stuff. And we'll be back with more stuff right after this. That's your game show reference, Josh Willis. The Gong Show, Chuck Barris. Look it up. Played by Sam Rockwell in Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Who won tonight? Anyway, that's all for now. Ta ta, everyone. We'll see you next time from Atlanta. Next vlog. Okay? Okay. <laughs>